Hi, today we are talking about Daximity, which is the professional social network for medical professionals. You must be noticing a change in the scenery, guys, but uh, I was reading up on them here on the beach and something just struck me and I wanted to get this video out to you guys as soon as I could. So you know what? We are going to shoot it right here on the beach. And uh, so, all right, let's get right into it. I'm Deepak Devjani. I'm a CTO and I help founders build and scale their companies. In these deep talk series, we focus on some of the biggest businesses today. How do they get started? How do they make their money? And what do they do to kind of grow into the companies they are? In today's video, we are speaking about Doximity, which is a professional social network for medical professionals, which is doctors and anybody else uh, in that same industry. So you guys must know about LinkedIn. I'm sure you guys know because it's all over the world. LinkedIn is kind of a generic professional social network. It kind of caters to every field out there. But medical field by itself has a lot of specific nuances that LinkedIn is not able to cover. Okay, so Doximity was started by three folks, one of them being Jeff Tangney. He's a serial entrepreneur. He has previously built out a medical social networking type app and had a good exit, sold it, out to, sold it to a medical healthcare provider, Dina Health, I believe, for almost $300 million. And uh, second one being Shani, I believe Shani, Shari Buck, sorry, and then Nate Gross, which is the doctor, who is a doctor, uh, which is good because you could not have built a, an app catering to medical professionals without having a doctor on board as part of the founding team. So that's a great note there. Why did they start it? Well, as Jeff Tangney, the CEO and one of the founders, mentions on a recent interview on CNBC that before this, the medical professional, the primary way that they communicated with each other or 80% of that communication happened via either snail mail or fax, just kind of quite antiquated, if you may, if you may think about it. So, and that's where we get to this. He set out to build a platform that would allow medical professionals to communicate with each other, right? Securely share, pa share patient information, anonymize with HIPAA compliance, of course, get feedback from each other, connect with each other, find each other, right? And, and, and that's what it was. He goes, I'm going to look at this community, look at, the, look at the medical professionals and professionals and build tools for them. Hence, you have Doximity. So, let's talk about some numbers. Doximity has 1.8 million medical professionals in the U.S. alone, including 80% of those folks being just physicians, okay? Doximity sales recently hit $200 million in 2020. One of the only fewer companies that's also profitable at such an early stage. Um, prior to going public, they had raised about $81 million. Uh, and then went public in the end of June 2021, just a couple months ago, because I'm recording this here in August. And at the IPO, it raised about $600 million. And now, the company already has a market cap of over $8.5 billion. So, it's pretty serious. So, how do Ducks Media make money? Well, you may think doctors are paying to be on the platform, but they're not. So the way Doximity makes money is from three different organizations, not the doctors, not its users. Doximity's main paying user groups are healthcare organizations, pharmaceutical manufacturers, healthcare providers and systems, and medical recruiting firms. So Doximity makes money three ways. Ready? First, drug makers, so marketing solutions, right? Drug makers create, manufacture drugs, have particular treatments, and now, once doctors are on the platform, they tell the platform their expertise and their specialities, and the platform verifies it, it's, it, it's, cred it's credentialed. Now the drug makers know exactly who is an oral surgeon, and if they come up with a drug that only an oral surgeon can prescribe, they now know exactly which people and which doctors to market that drug to. That can go across every speciality. That's how Doximity makes most of its money. Second biggest way it makes money, is recruiting. So hospitals contact Doximity to help them find the best doctors and best ta medical talent in any particular speciality that, that they're trying to fill. Lastly, telehealth, which is the last smaller one that they've just started recently. Uh, for some of the smaller providers, smaller he healthcare providers, Doximity becomes a platform that allows them to provide healthcare services using telehealth to end consumers. So those are the three ways Doximity makes money. You're working with pharmaceutical and drug manufacturers to get ads in front of its user base, 1.8 million physicians and doctors and medical professionals. Second way, hospitals pay them to recruit talent 
a fine talent for them. And third, telehealth. What's my take on it? Well, most analysts think that the future of doximity can be capped, right? Because uh, it already has most of America's doctors and different and different and the healthcare industry works very differently in other countries, right? Um, I almost see this as a positive because that creates a really high barrier to entry for any other entrance to come into the market. Because if Doximity has most of the doctors on it and it's doing everything right, not royally messing up, it becomes really hard for other incumbents to come into the, come into the market and, and pose a serious threat. First, hey, and you can, once you have this moat built up, which Doximity seems to have built up, you can continue selling value add services to the same group, okay? Jeff Tangney, the CEO, believes it's only on the up and on the up because they haven't even gotten into other verticals and other specialities, which could be next, which definitely could be next. Um, so one, I do want to point out one other thing about Doximity that I am personally not 100% that I feel a bit iffy about. Now, it's great because it's great from a business perspective that it's allowing pharmaceuticals and other companies to really hyper target their ads for the drugs that they're manufacturing to just the doctors who can prescribe those drugs, right? Awesome from that perspective because before that it was only go it was always a spray and pray type of uh, me mechanism. But America is the only place where drugs are actually advertised to doctors. No other country does it this way. So I'm a bit iffy about the ethics and civics question about really enabling that. But if you can look past that, it's a great business model. There you have it, folks. Uh, if you like the video, let me know. If there's too much noise. Let me know that. Let me know about that also in the comments below. Kindly, please subscribe and hit uh, like because it really motivates us to keep going. Lastly, if there are any other companies you'd like to know about, please let me know in the comments. I promise you respond to every, I respond to every single one of them. And I'll get that video out for you guys shortly. Thank you.